Looking for magic cards? Shop at Flipside Gaming using promo code LVD or find them on TCG Player through my affiliate link. Alright, pack one, pick one. Opened Valiant Knight, which is a decent rare. 4 mana, 3, 4. Just itself gaining double strike is pretty good. So you don't need many other knights to make it a powerful card, but there are a few knights sprinkled into the set, especially in white. It's not a bad first pick. I've got some decent uncommons. Siegebreaker Giant, good in aggressive decks. We've got uh, Volley Veteran, not too many goblins, but it does pair well with the instigator that makes a goblin token, so you get two goblins for one card. And then we've got Colossal Majesty as a potential card draw engine in, in green decks. And then looking at the commons, we've got Divination as a nice 2 for 1, we've got uh, Rabbit Bite as a good removal spell in green, and Bogger Brute a nice creature for more aggressive decks. I think it's probably still the rare here. I also think white is the best color in M19, so I don't really mind starting there. So let's take a Valiant Knight. Alright, I mean, I'm not trying to force this archetype, but it is there, Heroic Reinforcements and the Red-White Go White deck might be the most powerful deck if it comes together. So that's a very appealing option. There's a star Crown Stag as it just a very good white card to go with the Valiant Knight, which would also be good in uh, an aggressive deck. We've got uh, Deck Hands as a nice evasive creature that can help close the game. And then that's about it. So it's pretty much between Stag and Reinforcements. I do think Reinforcements is a more powerful card, but Stag keeps us a little bit more open. We'll take the Reinforcements. Third pick. Now I can take the Starcrown Stag. I will start with 3-4 drops, which is not ideal, but I think it's enough better than the Instigator still that I'll take it here. Instigator, of course, would also be quite good in a Go White token deck like... Uh, the one we want to pair with the reinforcements. But uh, Stag is very good, and uh, we might not get a chance to pick up another one. Now I'm kind of uh, liking the Leonin Vanguard. We're gonna be playing lots of small creatures, so the Vanguard's consistently gonna be a 2-2. That also gains a bit of life, so if we happen to get some life gain synergy cards, it uh, gets even better, but just as a 1-mana 2-2. It's quite good, and then the next best card here, maybe the Sure Strike, maybe the Paramancer, but Vanguard it is. Now a pretty easy Bogger Brutes as a nice uh, evasive creature with Menace. Take Vengeance is also okay, but much better in more defensive white decks. Not great when you're the aggressor, because the opponent's creatures are not going to be tapped all that often. Rogue Scoffs can also be an option if we have lots of small flying creatures. But I'll take a Brute, fits in the curve nicely. And then now I'll take the Swift Claw. Not an impressive card, but you do need something at 2 mana to fill out the curve. And especially if you compare this with like a Starcrown Stag or a Pegasus Courser, to get in for 3 damage consistently, it does add up. Yeah, this is a good point that uh, Take Vengeance is a good combo with a Starcrown Stag. So that's definitely worth pointing out that you can tap the opponent's creature and then kill it. Sometimes Motivator can be okay, especially if we have more cards like Bogger Brute as opposed to cards like various uh, Token Makers, which is not the best combo with a Motivator, but it's very good with cards like Brute and Stag that can make a big difference if you can play them and give them haste right away. Chaplain's also decent, especially if we have lots of pump effects like Reinforcements and Inspire Charge to add extra power to then gain more life. And a 1-3 does block pretty well if we need to play defense every now and then. I think I'll take the Chaplain over the Motivator still. Sure Strike's a pretty good combat trick. I might play two of them. Probably not going to play a third. Nothing here. Just take an Uncommon for the Vaults. And we got an Aspire Charge, nice. So, deck's coming together nicely. 
probably take the line breaker now over the third sure strike. So, yeah, the curve looks reasonable at the moment. We've got our two anthem effects and in sp inspired charge and reinforcements. Could use another one of each potentially, and then we just want to make sure we have a nice low curve of creatures. All right, Mentor of the Meek is quite strong too in this deck. We're going to be playing lots of small creatures, so we can draw cards if the game stalls out. So perfect fit, nothing else really that comes close. The Ogre, maybe a slight upgrade over the Linebreaker, but that's about it. All right, nice, got some options. The Pride Maid, of course, a great combo with uh, Leon in Vanguard. We've got Chaplain that gains life too. So that could be a thing. Otherwise, Luminous Bonds is a pretty solid removal spell at 3. It's actually close, because we could use more good 2-drops. And the Pride Maid kind of fits in perfectly. And if we happen to draw both Vanguard and Pride Maid, it just turns into a huge win condition. Bonds is quite good too. Don't get me wrong. But uh, I think in the best possible versions of, of this deck, you don't even need all that much removal. You just want to play creatures, play Anthem effects. You can use combat tricks instead of removal spells. Of course, sometimes you're going to be behind on boards, and then the combat tricks are not going to work out as well. And then you would want some uh, removal like Luminous Bonds. But I think I'm leaning Pride Mate here. Militia Bugler seems decent. Nothing else really in the pack. Mighty Leap is usually worse than Sure Strike. Dragon's a little bit too expensive to consistently uh, kick in this deck. Sky Scanner's okay, just because it plays a small body that uh, replaces itself, but the Bugler's kind of bigger and will often still find something. I guess our creatures are often 3-powered as well. So it might not have the most uh, consistent hit rate, but we should be able to pick up some more 2-mana two 2-2s two and smaller flyers maybe that we can find with it, so... Alright, now I've got another interesting pick. Both Shock and Luminous Bones, excellent removal spells. Even the Rustwing Falcon is a consideration here, just as a nice cheap evasive creature that uh, plays well with all these Anthem effects to give it extra power. It's also a small creature for Bugler and Mentor. But there's a chance it could wheel, whereas Shock and Luminous Bonds probably don't. Shock is the cheaper removal spell, so it's better if we're curving out. Luminous Bonds is uh, a better answer to bigger creatures. So I think I'm probably taking the Bonds here, but it's definitely a close pick. Not loving anything here. Don't have any artifacts for the Pack Beast at the moment. We're pretty light on evasive creatures for the Rogue's Gloves. Dragon is going to be a 5 mana 3 3 flyer, which is a bit overpriced. And Apparatus is pretty expensive removal, so maybe the Rogue's Gloves gets there if we pick up enough uh, Falcons. Havoc Devils could be okay. Don't love that it's double red. Makes it a bit hard to cast, but uh, it is potentially a card that could make the cuts. So both Inspired Charge and Falcon would be good additions. I think I'm taking the Falcon since it's the thing we need more than another Inspired Charge at the moment. Definitely need to lower the curve of the deck. Combos well with Mentor and Bugler. And maybe the Rogue's Gloves if we pick up a couple extra Falcons. And we might get another Inspired Charge later. It's a card that the bots don't really prioritize. Nothing here that I want. Maybe Field Creeper if I don't pick up more 2-drops. Dwarven Priest uh, better in a more defensive deck. And I don't think we're Tormenting Voicing. Really want to play a 2-mana two 2-2 two -two creature on turn 2 if possible, at the very least. Don't need more Sure Strikes. Maybe I'll need another Line Breaker. All right, got our motivator in case we need it. All right, so heading into the last pack, 
could use a couple more cheap creatures, especially token makers would be nice. But overall our deck is coming together pretty well. Well, it is an on-color rare, but it's not quite what uh, we need for our deck. This is more of a red-green ramp card. Don't have many goblins for the veteran. Bogger Brute's a goblin. And a Goblin Motivator's a goblin. But that's it. I do like another Brute. Instigator. Paramancer. Those are kind of uh, the cards I'm looking at. Both the Paramancer and the Instigator are good with Bugler and Mentor. Instigator may be a little bit better with Mentor since we can potentially draw two cards with it. I typically don't love two mana two ones in this set since there's so many one threes. Between uh, Chaplain, Omen Speaker, in green you've got a one three ramp creature. You've got cards like Skyscanner as a three mana one one. You've got Skeleton Archer that deals one damage. So two mana two ones, you don't often get to attack with them. At least if we're making tokens, there's kind of the go wide angle that makes them a little bit better. It is close. Of course, we do get two damage when it enters the battlefield, so at least it does something. Uh, I'll, I'll take a Pyromancer and hopefully we can wheel the Instigator out of that pack. Now it's got to be the Stag over Knightly Valor. Valor is also decent, especially paired with uh, evasive creatures like the Rustwing Falcon. But uh, another stack seems a bit more important since our deck is light on removal, so we need kind of pseudo removal to keep attacking. And then now I could take another Inspired Charge. Not a huge fan of Lightning Mare. A double red also makes it difficult to cast early on. It's basically Charge versus Ogre. Ogre would probably be an upgrade over the Line Breaker. Yeah, let's take a charge. Ooh, wow. Well, it's got to be another reinforcements here, but would have loved another Vanguard too. Cavalry would have been decent as a way to make some tokens. But uh, reinforcements it is. And then now there's Cavalry. There's also Shield Mare, which is okay. So what's our situation like? So the Cavalry is a Knight, and it makes a Knight token, so it does synergize with a Valiant Knight as well. Probably don't need to play the Havoc Devils. I could potentially cut an Inspire Charge now that we have double reinforcements. I do have a bit more of a gap at 3 mana, but some of these 4 drops, like Charge especially, I'm not often going to play on turn 4 anyway, so it doesn't really matter that we have this many 4 drops. Alright, let's take the Cavalry. Maybe we'll play a Lava Axe. I don't think we're Tectonic Rifting. Not going to play two motivators. Maybe we'll invoke the divine, but I doubt it. Not going to need Minotaur. Right, so it doesn't look like we're going to get much else here. Maybe we'll Night Splash. Would have been better with more Rustwing Falcons. Alright, so... Had a nice gift with that late Heroic Reinforcements, but not much else in this pack. So our deck is decent. It's not perfect. A bit light on quality 2-drops and only the one Falcon. But uh, looks playable. So not loving the Rogue's Gloves. Probably playing another Line Breaker just to have more creatures. Might actually play a Field Creeper here just to have an extra 2-drop, even though I just said I don't love Two mana, two ones in the set. Something like this. Could potentially get away with 16 lands, but I also don't really want to miss my land drops when it comes to curving out and playing my four drops on turn four, so it's kind of tricky. Could maybe play a Lava Axe as well as a finisher. So yeah, the maybes here. Knight's Pledge, Field Creeper, Lava Axe, a Line Breaker is a maybe, and the second Inspire Charge is a maybe. And then could potentially go 16 lands, but I think I'm leaning 17 since we have so many 4s. I'm probably going to need the Sure Strikes since we're not working with a lot of other removal. 
So if we keep charge and axe, and cut these three, we're left with a deck that looks something like this. So I guess these are kind of our finishers. Yeah, looks okay. A reasonable curve of creatures, a couple inspire charges and reinforcements, which are going to do the heavy lifting. Love Axe for a bit of reach, and then just a one removal spell, so it is important that we curve out so we can attack, apply pressure, and force them into situations where we can set up our Sure Strike. And then a mana base, probably favoring white for the Inspire Charge. Need double white for the activated ability. Do we have any other knights besides the cavalry? I don't think we do. It's all warriors and soldiers. But I also don't need double whites all that often early on. And I do also need red for some of these creatures. So I think I'm still leaning 9-8. Reasonable hands. Could use an extra creature along the way, but uh, most of our deck is creatures. Uh oh, Seder Enchanter, that's scary. Of course, Luminous Bond's not a very good removal spell against the Enchanter. Our deck in general can't really punish Auras all that much. Also Majesty, all right, pretty good. Draw a card with Enchanter and with the Boar. Play Linebreaker, and the next turn will probably Inspire Charge. Could have also been correct to just use the Sure Strike to get an extra damage last turn, but I could also use it defensively. Now they could have Titanic Growth, which would beat my Sure Strike here, but I think that's okay. All right, time to charge. And the Lava Axe can close out the game. So looking good. Darkrown stack definitely did a ton of work this game. This hand's a little awkward with all these fours, but I am on the play. I get to start with a falcon. Hopefully we draw a two drop or a three drop along the way. Can't really mulligan. That's a good draw. Should probably attack first in case they wanted to shock the Falcon. There's Chaplain. So they're just not gonna attack with the uh, Swift Claw here. Boy. 
opponent's also in red white aggro. Well then, things got interesting. I think we still stack first. If they don't remove the stag, double reinforcements is going to be hard to beat. If they can remove the stag, things get more complicated. All right. They do have the luminous bonds. I think I still want to play knights first. Then if I draw land, I can also go vanguard into reinforcements, which is even better. Sure. Alright, I think I'm just gonna take it slow once again, deploy my creatures and then the reinforcements next turn to maximum effect. Alright, time for the reinforcements. Smash with everyone. Opponent can make some decent blocks. But still took uh, quite a beating down to seven. Don't think we die on the way back. That's unfortunate. All right, time to reinforce the reinforcements. So their opponent's not dead, but uh, we're also not dying on the way back, and we still have a sure strike to get across the finish line. So our opponent will gain one from the chaplain but it will take at least four. So that should be game. And then of course the first strike will happen before regular damage. So they won't even gain the one life before I deal them lethal damage. All right, double uh, charge got the job done. On the play, no white mana. But we do have a reasonable hand otherwise. Uh, I guess it's lacking like a two drop or a three drop. Hmm, this one's close. I think I'm keeping. Mostly because we have reinforcements, which is such a powerful card. And then we've got nine planes to draw towards. Watch this. Two minor removal spell, no big deal. That's a good draw. Well, not the land we needed here. Let's uh, attack. Opponent could have a hired blade, I suppose, which ambushes motivator. So do I not attack with it? Yeah, sure. Disperse, love to see it. Mm, 
All right. Well, we're in a bit of trouble now. I think I still keep back motivator for at least one turn. Case of hundred blades. Aha. Uh -huh. All right, so my first spell is probably getting countered. Now uh, let's test out the waters with a uh, swift claw. I guess if the Swift Claw trades, I could start attacking with Motivator again. And even if I reinforcements, this would still trade for the blade. So maybe it is fine to trade. That's back on top. Fair enough. They did not keep cancel mana up, but they could have Asa Scatter. Can just replay Brute Attack for three, which is fine. If it gets Asa Scattered, so be it, and then save the Cavalry as a slightly more valuable card. Although if I play the Cavalry and draw a land next turn, I could double spell Brute and Bonds, which is more efficient. So maybe I should still Cavalry here. And then it's probably fine to trade a token for the Blood Ladder, even though if I pump it up with reinforcements, it wouldn't trade. Another Hired Blade, sure. They still trade for the Blood Ladder, which makes sense in the context of reinforcements and Inspired Charge. But now we get to make the play we alluded to earlier. So I think I would rather have the Brute Resolve if they do have a cancel. Motivator putting in some work this game. All right, sweet. Bit of a stumble with our mana early on, but things still lined up quite well for us. A uh, bit of a slower draw, but seems okay. Yeah, maybe scare them into not playing a uh, enchantment on the falcon. Ooh. Opponents got to shock themselves. Pretty effective. And yeah, we're on the defensive here which is not where we want to be. There's an argument for playing Vanguard, but then it's not as mana efficient. If the Swift Claw attacks, do I trade for the Brutes? I probably have to, but then am I not better off playing the Vanguard? Brute can also block their Vanguard, whereas my Vanguard can't. So if they're Leon and Vanguard attacks, I think I'm still blocking it. Oh, never mind. In this case, I guess I'll just trade for Swift Claw. Hmm. 
and hope that uh, Valiant Knight doesn't get answered. This could be an Inspired Charge, but we should still be able to trade off for at least one of their creatures. It's just a Falcon, alright. Ooh, Volley Veteran. Glad I didn't have a Vanguard in play. So I get to gain a bit of life. Think I'll send one token and a Vanguard. Maybe it's not even worth it to send the Vanguard since it's gaining the life to offset the Falcon attacks. But if it trades, it would trade for the Veteran, which also attacks past my Valiant Knights. Maybe I should keep back both tokens so I can double block the Veteran if it attacks. And just send the Vanguard, which I'm fine trading for their Vanguard. And I'm fine if it trades for Veteran. Sure. So we're not in a great spot, but next turn I can also start activating the Valiant Knights. Stag is nice. So I could attack first, and then if they do triple block I can pump Knights, otherwise I'll just play Stag. Well, I wanted to keep a wide mana here, but the auto tapper disagrees. That's a good draw. So now what? Let's say I were to attack with everyone. And play Inspire Charge, how much damage are we talking about? Would be 20, so they definitely have to block. What are their likely blocks? I guess Chaplain would go on Pyromancer or a token. Drillmaster could trade off. Alright, let's send in everyone. And then I guess I can even tap down the... I guess I want to tap down Drillmaster instead of Chaplain, although tapping down Chaplain means they don't gain the life. Let's tap down Drillmaster. Yeah, they have to block with the Vanguard too if they want to survive an Aspire Charge. Otherwise they would have taken Exaxes. But it was close, they almost would have survived and then attacked me back for 6 on the way back. Still dead to a number of pump spells. Close one. Ooh, nice hand. We have yet to cast this Lava Axe, but it uh, would have been good a couple times. Ah, turn late. I'll still take it though. Usually one avoids trading when uh, playing Inspire Charge. So I th think I'm just gonna play Bugler. Could attack, Sure Strike and play Vanguard, which is an option too. But the red-green deck is gonna have some bigger creatures where I'll need the Sure Strike more. That's a miss. 2-3 Vigilance for 3 still alright. Yeah, 
Yeah, I guess I'll use my sure strike if they block. Double block. That's generous. Uh oh, that's a scary card. Well, let's get in damage while we can. So, is it time to inspire charge? I think it is. And then Lava Axe is almost lethal by itself. They could play that uh, Hellion with 7 power instead of Demanding Dragon, pretty good too. Gonna have to sacrifice a creature, probably the Vanguard. I guess, let's see, I could have also... I guess I could have taken a 5, that was probably better. But uh, that worked out, because keeping a Paramancer means we can attack with a Sure Strike. If we drew it... Yeah, it's been a while since I faced a Demanding Dragon. Alright, opponent stays alive. Just need to get in one damage with my creatures here. Rabbit bites. Yeah, this is starting to slip away. Mentors are right. I guess I'll stay back so I can block the Sentinel if needed. Oh boy. Well. I'm probably gonna lose anyway there. Of course, the correct play is not to sack a creature there, but I'm just saying in the hypothetical where we did take the 5, I think we still die. Because we take lethal damage before we get 5 mana. Alright. Seems fine. Alright, so up against Black White Life Gain. Yeah, the Sprite made us scary. So can't really block since they can activate this before damage. The awkward part here is that it's a little suspicious if I don't attack with both, but I guess I'll keep both back. That way if they have a removal spell I can still block and sure strike. If I don't pull off the sure strike, the Pride Mate's probably gonna be a pretty big problem going late, although we can tap it down with a stag if needed. Hopefully they attack. No attacks. Alright, so they figured out our sure strike plan.
Still probably double blocking the archer given the chance. This game's not going well. So the sure strike double block could still kill the pride mate, but I'll end up losing my creatures as well. So we'd have to double block the pride mate, sure strike one of my creatures. They pump with a neonate, pride mate's a 5 5, so sure strike doesn't kill it, but then regular damage will. But that's probably still the play. That's a problem too. So playing stag means if they block the Child of Night, they can archer it to finish it off. So I might be better off playing cavalry first. Any reason to double block if they have the black pump spell, it's just worse to do so. Gonna have to try to sure strike again here before this primate gets out of hand. They can skeleton archer the motivator. Probably got a trade for this archer, which is also not great. So on the board we can trade off and then the neonate will still kill us in a couple turns. And we don't have uh, anything that really kills it. So we got to somehow deal somewhere around 30 damage before uh, this kills me, so that's probably not going to happen. Alright, let's go out in style, since I'm done on board. On the play, decent hands. Ooh, our hand got a whole lot better. Cavalry into reinforcements is the plan. I 
I guess uh, we'll need a mountain. Um, blue rats. Sure. Bugler finds pride mates. And then do I send in the Vigilant Tokens? Opponent could have a Trumpet Blast, technically speaking, which would still be quite good if they get to keep the tokens. Dragon Egg. Alright. Probably still reinforcements. Playing the Pride Mate first has the advantage that it gets a counter from Chaplain, but doesn't seem as relevant as making a good attack before the opponent potentially draws a bigger creature. And then the Lightning Mare and the Dragon Token both need a lot of mana, so it doesn't really matter if they have both in play at the same time. That should be game now with a Sure Strike. On the draw. Yeah, I guess on the draw we can keep this. So far I've had the opportunity to Lava Axe myself for lethal. Let's see if we can do it to our opponent this time. Could see an Essence Scatter. I'll take it. So now we have a play even if uh, we don't hit our land drop. Put on some sort of uh, blue-white control deck maybe. Ooh. Well, if we draw lands, this hand's definitely quite strong. So I think now we'll take the opportunity to get the stag out there. Which will probably get answered by, like, a luminous bonds. Dwindle wouldn't be as bad, because then we can still attack and tap something down. Alright, that's fine too. Can Luminous Bonds that? Could 
because if I heroic reinforcements now, I can tap down the scholar, but then the priest still has a good block on the pyromancer. So I think we just luminous bones, and then what's the alternative? Just playing more creatures out to set up the reinforcements. Bones isn't very mana efficient, but I think it's still the play. Yeah, Swift Claw plus Bonds would have been a more efficient turn now. So, opponent's got 4 mana up. Don't think this is a turn where I want a reinforcements. So, uh, play Cavalry probably gets countered, but that's alright. Divination. Keeps up for mana again. Can go for Swift Claw plus Brutes. Hope my opponent's not playing Cleansing Nova. And then next turn we can try and set up a big attack. Maybe I should still Valiant Knight here. It's still very good if it resolves, because it's uh, potentially a double striking creature, it pumps the Knight tokens. But it would also be a good turn if the reinforcements resolved. Still don't have a great attack. Let's say I tap down the Swift Claw. Yeah, let's just wait a turn. Nah, I'm surprised that resolved. Let's get in there. And what do we tap down? Um, probably the Dwarven Priest at this point, since I have double Swift Claw. And then we even have a Sure Strike at the ready. Oh wow, uncomfortable chill. What a blowout. Yeah, it's pretty good here. Well, hopefully it's not a complete disaster. It is a pretty good counter to Inspire Charge effects, but not always easy to keep up 3 mana. It might not be that bad with the Sure Strike here. I can either save the Stag or the Valiant Knight. Valiant Knight is probably the better one to save here. Still get to kill the Swift Claw. Alright, this Lava Axe is also looking good. And our point explodes. Alright, time for the final boss.
This hand has a pretty straightforward game plan. It does require us drawing two lands. Drawing a two-drop would be good too. If I could replace one Inspired Charge with a land or a creature, it would look quite a bit better, but... Can I really mulligan this? I don't think I can. I do have a Goblin Motivator in the deck, so if I draw it, playing Vanguard turn 1 could be slightly better. Gotta put them to the test. Alright, I've got the double falcon. Slightly punished for the attack there, but I kind of wanted them to be attacking with their falcon to an extent. Alright, we did draw the lands at least. Sure. They'll never expect the uh, second Inspired Charge. Charge does line up quite well against all these 1-2s and 1-3s, but Oaken Form makes that a little bit less uh, appealing. I'd love to see the attack. Alright, let's smash. This is looking good. Reclamation Sage, just as a 2-1 blocker. And this charge should be lethal. Probably should have cast it before blocks. This might be considered BM, but oh well. Just gotta be careful that it's not a Trumpet Blast, because you can only use that effectively when you're attacking, so it's a good habit to attack first. Alright, so we got uh, 7 wins with a pretty nice Boros deck, proving that you don't need much removal as long as you're curving out and playing Reinforcements and Inspire Charge. Nice Alpine Moon. Yeah, this set has a few stinkers for limited. Some uh, cards that were mostly meant for older formats, like Alpine Moon, Isolate. There's a couple in every color, pretty much. Scapeshift, another one that's purely for Constructed. And a Vivian's Invocation, pretty strong. Not sure what I would take here between Invocation. Vinemare is very strong too. Lich's Caress is a nice removal spell. A lot of good cards here. So I want to thank everyone for watching. Hope you enjoyed. And as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel. And you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.